The purpose of this video is not to be exhaustive in my explanation, but rather to get you started thinking about a better and cleaner way to build your code. Once you've taken these initial steps, you can start following and watching people like John Sundell, who takes these concepts to the next level. I'll leave a link to his site in the notes below. As I was developing my skill set, I read a lot of blog posts and watched a lot of videos, but I found that often, either A, the writer or YouTuber often tried to cover too much and I'd get lost, or B, the blog or video quickly went over my head. In this video, I'm going to go through an example where I refactor the kind of code that I used to do as a beginner to utilize class and struct computed properties. This is the first in a series of videos where I go over computed properties, property access levels, and property observers. If you're interested in learning about this, then just keep watching. I'm going to start out in this playground to show you how I used to do things. I'm going to create a simple employee struct that has four stored properties. The name, annual salary, number of weeks per year that he works, and the number of hours per day that he or she works. In the past, if I wanted to calculate the weekly salary, I'd create a function that would accept the annual salary, the number of weeks worked, and return the salary based on this calculation. Similarly, if I wanted to calculate the hourly wage, I would pass in the annual salary, the number of weeks worked, the number of hours per day, and do my calculation like this. So let me create an employee whose name is Stuart, who has an annual salary of 120000 per year, I wish, worked for 48 weeks per year, not bad, vacation, and for 7.5 hours per day. I can get his weekly salary and hourly wage by passing the corresponding employee values into each function. That served my purpose, but since my functions are always going to be applied to an employee, what are they doing sitting outside of the employee struct? They have no business being there. With computed properties, you can hide the internal data and functionality of an object. A computed property is one that runs some code in order to calculate the value. This is known as encapsulation and is one of the most important object-oriented design principles. Only the employee struct needs to know how to calculate the weekly and hourly wages. So let's bring those functions in by way of a computed property. I'll just duplicate the existing struct and rename it employee2. Now, I'll set up a computed property for weekly salary, and it'll be of type double. I do this by declaring the variable and type, and then creating a code block that returns the calculated value. In this case, annual salary divided by the weeks per year as a double. I can do the same with hourly wage. As you see, a computed property can use another computed property in its code block and as well as any of its stored properties. This computed property is known as a getter. I could write the same code block like this. But since all we're doing is getting the value, that can be left out, but I'm gonna leave it here for the next section. Let's test this out by creating another employee using this new struct. Aiden's salary is $50,000 a year, and he has 50 weeks to work, for 8 hours a day. Getting his weekly salary is easy. We just have to access the computed property on the instance of the employee too. Same thing with hourly wage. Now what if I wanted to change the hourly wage of an employee and have that update the annual salary? If we try this on Aiden, employee 2, we get an error, cannot assign to property, hourly wage is a get only property. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's copy and paste the employee 2 struct again and make a new one called employee 3. By default, all computer properties have a getter as I said in the last example, but they can also possibly have a setter. You can create a setter that can modify other stored properties of your struct. When you change the value of a computed property that has a setter, you have access to the new value. 
so we can use this to calculate the annual salary and update our salary property. So if we create a new employee, Emily, whose salary is $22,500 a year, works 50 weeks per year for seven and a half hours a day, we can, as of before, find her weekly salary and hourly wage. But now, because we have a setter on hourly wage, we can update it and see how not only her annual salary has been changed, but also the computed weekly salary is also updated. In the next video in this series, we'll take a look at class and struct methods that can also be used to modify your properties, but we will also look at public and private access and how we can limit how those values can be manipulated. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who have left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my YouTube channel to see what other videos I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store. And check out my GitHub repository to see what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.